हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल व्हिच इज रियल होम्योपैथी प्लीज डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल इफ यू डू लाइक माय वीडियो प्लीज प्रेस द लाइक बटन सो दैट आई कैन मोटिवेट टू मेक मोर वीडियो एंड टुडे आई बी एक्सप्लेनिंग गायनेकोलॉजी एंड टुडेस टॉपिक इज डिसमेनोरिया एंड इट्स टाइप्स सो this dysmenorrhea they will be asking this question for 5 marks which is a must know question so firstly we need to understand what is the definition of dysmenorrhea and its types so definition of this is it means a painful menses painful menstruation so the um, other definition of this can also be painful menstruation of sufficient magnitude so as to incapacitate day to day activities of a girl so it is a painful menstruation or a painful menstruation which alters the in uh, day to day activities of hers so the painful menses is known as dysmenorrhea so types of that is going to be primary dysmenorrhea which is also known as spasmodic and secondary dysmenorrhea also known as congestive so firstly we'll have we have to know the primary dysmenorrhea which is spasmodic so this is uh, when there is no identifiable pelvic pathology so that is called as primary dysmenorrhea so incidence is essential so they may separately ask this primary dysmenorrhea which is called as spasmodic for 3 marks or membranous uh dysmenorrhea like that they can ask it for 5 or 3 marks so incidence we have to write incidence is 15 to 20% with evident of oral contraceptives and non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs which is nsaids so incidence is in 15 to 20% of that whoever take oral contraceptives will be seen in that person so causes of pain so first one it is confined to adolescent confined to ovulatory cycles so pain usually cure following pregnancy and a vaginal delivery so pain here is going to be cured after the pregnancy or following the pregnancy and the de vaginal delivery so next one so the pain here is related to dysrhythmic uterine contractions and uterine hypoxia so hypoxia means absence of enough oxygen supply to the uterus so the pain is related to dysrhythmic contractions of uterus next one is psychosomatic factors of tension and anxiety during adolescence and lower the pain threshold here it uh, so the cause may also be psychosomatic like tensions any stress that uh, the girl may carry in her adult wood next one is abnormal anatomical and functional aspect of myometrium so next one here is the uterine so this one is abnormal anatomical any pelvic anatomically the girl may have any something like functional disturbances in the myometrium the layer of the uterus so next coming to the other cause here is uterine myometrial hyperactivity has been observed in cases with primary dysmenorrhea so the next cause is imbalance in autonomic nervous control of uterine muscles imbalance in autonomic nervous control of the uterine muscles there is overactivity of the sympathetic nerves here so due to that 
over activity of that sympathetic nerves there is hypertonicity of the circular fibers of this isthmus and internal os of the uterus so the pain of uh, the relief of pain following the dilatation of the cervix or following any vaginal delivery may be explained by the damage of the adrenergic neurons which fail to regenerate role of prostaglandins prostaglandins so uh, in ovulatory cycles under the action so in ovulatory cycles under the action of progesterone which is a prostaglandin which is pgf2 and pge2 are synthesized from the secretory endometrium so pgf2 alpha is a strong vasoconstrictor which causes ischemia angina also called as angina of the myometrium so we will see the role of prostaglandins here in ovulatory cycles the action of the progesterone which is the prostaglandins which are which is um, pg f2 alpha and pg e2 are synthesized from the secretory endometrium so these prostaglandins are secreted from the endometrium so these prostaglandins are released with maximum production during shedding of the endometrium so uh, maximum production during shedding of the endometrium when the endometrium sheds so during that time prostaglandin is released in the maximum production so pgf2 alpha is a strong vasoconstrictor here so the possible cause of pain owing to uh, j z which is shown here which is shown here j z myometrial contractions okay the cause of this primary dysmenorrhea the progesterone here pgf2 alpha synthesis and release and uh, i'll explain this uh, endothelium and all i'll explain so i have explained about this now reduced blood flow hypoxia in the previous this thing previous um, slide i have explained that angina uh, okay reduced blood flow hypoxia here ischemia angina here which leads to pain that is also the cause and next coming to the other cause here we'll see role of vasopressin so this increases prostaglandin synthesis and increases myocardial activity directly here so it causes uterine hyperactivity and dysrhythmic contractions which ultimately leads to ischemia here ischemia and hypoxia ischemia and hypoxia it causes ischemia and hypoxia here. next coming to platelet activating factor so paf it is associated with cause of dysmenorrhea and its concentration is higher platelet activating factor so uh, in the back slide so here what it says here endothelin and leukotrienes and platelet activating factors i have explained it here platelet activating factor i'll be explaining it and uh, endothelin leukotrienes will come in the next slide okay platelet activating factor i have explained so it is associated with the cause of dysmenorrhea as its concentration is found high okay next coming to leukotrienes uh, and platelet activating factors these are vasoconstrictors and it stimulates the myocardial contractions primary dysmenorrhea the patient profile we will see the primary dysmenorrhea is in seenly is seen predominantly it is confined to adolescent adolescent girls which appears within 2 years of menarche coming to clinical features pain last for few hours may extend 24 hours or even beyond 48 hours so within the span of 1 to 2 days 
it will appear so the type of pain is spasmodic and it is confined to lower abdomen may radiate to back and middle aspect of thighs systemic discomfort like nausea vomiting fatigue diarrhea headache and tachycardia accompanied by vasomotor changes causing pallor cold sweats and occasional fainting rarely syncope and collapse secondly we will see that was all about the primary dysmenorrhea coming to secondary dysmenorrhea it is a must know question where they will even ask this separately for 3 marks so this is associated with pelvic pathology so the primary wala it was not associated with the pelvic pathology but secondary it is associated with the pelvic pathology causes here we'll see causes here is endometriosis adenomyosis iucs which is intrauterine contraceptives in uterus obstruction due to malarian abnormalities anomalies cervical stenosis pelvic adhesions uterine fibroid pelvic congestion endometrial polyp chronic pelvic infection so this is the cause causes is endometriosis adenomyosis intrauterine contraceptives obstruction cervical stenosis pelvic adhesions uterine fibroids chronic pelvic infections pelvic congestion all of it next uh, coming to clinical features of that pain here is dull and it is in back and radiates to lower abdomen appears 3 to 5 days which is prior to period before the period and relieves during the onset of bleeding investigations trans vaginal sonography where you have to uh, detect any pelvic pathology for that like uh, leiomyoma and adenomyosis second one is saline infusion sonography to detect submucous fibroid or polyp laparoscopy endometriosis or pid pelvic inflammation disease hysterectomy for both diagnostic and therapeutic purpose it is used so this was it for today's video and i just want to thank you all for listening with listening and bearing my lecture if you like videos please press the bell icon 